In this video, we'll be going over cards which have a banished cost associated to their effect in some way, usually associated with acting one of their effects or summoning the card itself. And at number 10, we have Eater of Millions. This card can special summon itself from your hand by banishing five or more cards face down, from either your hand, field, or extra deck, or a combination of those three places. This card also gains 100 attack and defense for each banished face down card. It has a whole bunch of restrictions on how this card cannot be used as a material for pretty much all but Link summons from the extra deck, and can't be tributed, and also, once per turn, when this card battles, you can banish your opponent's monster face down at the start of the damage step. So, because of this card's unique way of banishing monsters, it kinda bypasses all kinds of protection effects, because it doesn't target the card, and it doesn't destroy, and removes it from the field in a way where the card will probably not get its floating effect if it has one. And also, since this card can't be used as a material for a whole bunch of extract monsters, it's unintentionally immune to cards like Super Polymerization and the Winged Dragon of Raw Sphere mode. So in order for your opponent to actually remove this card, they have to specifically target it with one form of their removal effects, or attack into it twice, since it'll be able to banish the first monster that attacks into it, but not the second one. And its summoning requirement allows you to banish more than 5 cards. Most of the time, you only want to banish the minimum amount, but if you're playing a deck like Grand Maju, then there are occasions where you might want to banish your entire extra deck in order to buff up Grand Maju a little bit more. Eater of Millions kind of replaces Neospacian Grand Mall as the stable monster to pick if you're in a deck that just wants something to attack over anything your opponent might have, and has seen a lot of competitive play over the years. And at number 9, we have Trap Trick. This is a normal trap card which has the effect where you can banish a normal trap card from your deck in order to set another. And also, you can activate the trap card this turn, but you can only activate one trap card for the rest of the turn after you resolve this effect. So it basically allows you to search out any normal trap card from your deck and activate it immediately, under the condition that that's the only thing you're doing for the rest of the turn in regards to trap cards. Seeing as this is a trap card and you're most likely using it on your opponent's turn anyway, that's not that bad of a downside. Trap Trick basically created the ultimate way to search out any normal trap card in the game, and is part of the reason Metaverse is limited to one copy. Because with two copies, it can be searched out with Trap Trick and make it a lot easier to search out things like Mystic Mine. Trap Tricks is just an excellent search tool, because as long as you have multiple copies of a normal trap card in your deck, you can probably search it out with Trap Trick. And the card has a whole bunch of versatile uses as long as you play multiple kinds of traps in your deck. Like if you want to set up Mirror Force right as your opponent's about to declare a direct attack, you can just wipe out your opponent's field. Or if your opponent's trying to blow up the entire field, you can use Trap Trick in order to set a copy of Waking the Dragon so that you can get out a strong extra deck monster like Ultimate Falcon. They don't really have generic searchers like this for spell or monster cards, because that would be kind of broken. And the only reason this card exists is because trap cards are just not as good as monsters or spells. And at number 8, we have Gizmek Orochi, the Serpentron Sky Slasher. This is a level 8 monster who can special summon itself from your hand or graveyard by simply banishing the top 8 cards of your deck face down. And it goes on to have another effect, where you can banish 3 cards from your extra deck face down in order to destroy one face-up monster on the field. Although this card can only use one of its two effects per turn, so you can't both special summon this card, then pop a card during the same turn. So what most decks do when they play this card is simply special summon this card during your opponent's turn, since its ability to special summon itself is a quick effect, and then during their turn they'll just use it to destroy one of their opponent's cards. And because this card can special summon itself during your opponent's turn, it's incredibly versatile in its uses. You could use it in order to just body block one attack, or to activate some effects during your opponent's turn, like Topologic Bomber Dragon, or to just set up during your opponent's end phase, that way you can destroy one of your opponent's cards as soon as your turn starts. This card saw a lot of success in Grand Maju decks because they love to have a whole bunch of cards banished, and that deck was very revolving around level 8 monsters anyway, so it kind of fit in perfectly. But it definitely saw play in other decks too because both of its effects are pretty good, and the cost for special summoning the card isn't that big of a deal in most decks, which is why cards like Pot of Desires are also so popular. And at number 7, we have Access Code Talker. This is a Link 4 monster who requires 2 plus effect monsters as its materials, and basically has spell speed 4 protection for all of its effects, where your opponent can't respond to any of its activated effects. And as soon as this card is summoned, if you used a Link monster as one of this card's materials, you can increase this card's attack by that monster's Link rating times 1000, and it keeps the attack gain permanently. 
So if you simply had a link two monsters, one of its materials, that gives it a 2000 attack boost, bringing it up to 4300 attack baseline. It also goes on to have another effect where you can banish a link monster from your field or graveyard in order to destroy one card your opponent controls without targeting it. And the only downside is that you can't banish another monster as a cost that has the same attribute as one you just used. So as long as you have a variety of different attribute link monsters in your graveyard, you can get rid of a lot of your opponent's monsters. And what's so good about this card is the fact that it's basically immune to negation. Most modern decks are all about negating card effects in various different ways, and your opponent can't stop Axis Code Talker from destroying their cards in the conventional way. They can still shut down the card for a turn with something like Forbidden Droplets or Infinite Impermanence, but they can't respond to it with something like Apollosa, Bo the Goddess, or even Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. And in fact, Axis Code Talker can help you get rid of both of those cards. So it's a generic boss monster that pretty much any deck can go into. It can easily get to super high attack power values and has non-targeting destruction, which is not once per turn. You can kind of see why this is such a popular staple boss monster. And at number 6, we have Miscellaneous Saurus. This is a level 4 dinosaur type monster who has two effects. One of them allows you to send this card from your hand to the graveyard as a quick effect during the main phase in order to make it so your dinosaur type monsters are unaffected by your opponent's activated card effects. So it kind of gives your dinosaur monsters ultimate falcons levels of protection, which allows dinosaur decks to save themselves from cards like Nibiru the Primal Being, or a plethora of other hand traps, or to just protect your cards during your opponent's main phase. And then, while this card is in your graveyard, you can banish this card as well as any number of dinosaur type monsters from your graveyard in order to special summon a dinosaur monster from your deck who has a level equal to the number of dinosaurs you banished for this effect. But that card is destroyed during the end phase. So if you simply banish this card and one other card, you can bring out Baby Sarasaurus from your deck. And even if it's destroyed during the end phase, it gets to special summon a level 4 lower dinosaur type monster from the deck. Although it's also useful if you just banish 4 cards in order to bring out something like Soul Eating Oviraptor, or any number of dinosaur type monsters. Miscellaneous Source just has two really good effects, and it's not too hard to understand why this card was actually banned for a while. In fact, many people wonder why this card isn't currently banned, because giving you basically immunity to card effects while also being able to summon a monster from the deck is really good for one card, especially in a pretty good deck like Dinosaurs. And at number 5, we have Pot of Extravagance. This is definitely one of the most played spell cards in the game, and simply has the effect where at the start of your main phase, you can banish 3 or 6 face down cards from your extra deck in order to draw one card for every 3 cards banished. But then for the rest of this turn, you cannot draw any other cards by card effects. So if you simply banish 6 cards, you get to draw 2 cards, and the only downside is not being able to draw other cards by card effects, but most meta decks like to search out cards from their deck anyway, not draw them, so that's not really a big deal. And being able to go plus 1 for just getting rid of some cards from your extra deck is totally worth it in a whole bunch of meta decks, especially if you don't really care what cards are in the extra deck very much. It basically just turns your extra deck into fuel for Pot of Extravagance. There is another card similar to this called Pot of Desires, where you can banish the top 10 cards of your deck face down to draw 2 cards. And both of these cards do see play for pretty similar reasons. Being able to go plus 1 with a generic spell card is pretty good. Although the downsides to both of them do limit their splash ability to an extent. There are some meta decks who are very combo focused and can't really afford to banish one key piece from their deck. So they don't risk it and don't play Pot of Desires. But there's also lots of control decks that don't care about what they banish from their deck or extra deck, and can play both of these cards and are made a lot better for it. And at number 4, we have Destiny Hero Malicious. Currently, as of making this video, Destiny Hero Malicious is the only card on the semi-limited list, and is kind of the poster boy for why the semi-limited list exists. Malicious simply has the effect where you can banish it from the graveyard to special summon another copy of it from your deck. And since this effect is not once per turn, a single Destiny Hero Malicious in your graveyard is a plus 2 in card advantage, as the second one you bring out can also immediately use its effect as soon as it hits the graveyard. And since it's so easy to get this card in the graveyard, since it's both Dark Attribute and Warrior type, two of the most common types and attributes in the game, it has been part of a lot of combos in the past, especially Dark Warrior combos. Although, if there's only two copies of this allowed in your deck, then its effect is a simple plus one in advantage, which is still good, but not as broken as a plus two. Generally, they ban cards that allow you to go plus two too easily, like Link Cross, 
but they don't need to ban Destiny Hero Militias in order to curtail its plus two. All they have to do is semi-limit it to two copies. It's kind of like why Zodiac Rat Peer is only limited instead of banned. That card is only overpowered if there's more than one copy of it allowed in the game, and its broken effect is completely unusable when it's limited to one copy. Sometimes you don't really need to ban a card in order to fix it, which is why the other two portions of the ban list exist. And at number three, we have Orcist Harp Horror. This card has the effect where you can banish it from the graveyard in order to special summon any one Orcus monster from your deck, except another copy of itself. And also, it locks out a special summoning other monsters except dark monsters for the rest of the turn. And technically, Orcist Harp Horror is only a plus one in advantage. But special summoning monsters from your deck is the best place to special summon monsters from. And being able to do an effect like that from the graveyard is kind of broken. At least Destiny Hero Malicious is limited in the fact that you can only use its effect on other copies of itself. But Orcus Harp Horror has an entire archetype to pick from. Other cards which also have graveyard effects. There's a reason the Orcus engine was used so frequently when Orcus Harp Horror was still allowed to be played in your deck. It was just an excellent engine that didn't really limit you too much as long as you just played other dark monsters. Or only used them in order to go to extra deck plays with dark monsters. Which there are plenty of as Dark is easily the best attribute in the game. And at number two, we have Fairy Tail Snow. This is a level four monster, which only has two effects. One of them is if this card is summoned, you get a Book of Moon effect, where you can flip one of your opponent's monsters face down. And also, if this card is in your graveyard, it has a quick effect, which allows you to banish seven other cards from your hand, field, or graveyard, or any combination of those three, in order to special summon this card from the graveyard, which then immediately allows it to activate its first effect, to flip one of your opponent's cards face down. So it's kind of like Eater of Millions, except from the graveyard, and doesn't let you use your extra deck as a resource. Now, one of the big problems with Fairy Tale Snow is the fact that cards it banishes do not get banished face down, like Eater of Millions. It allows you to use cards from the graveyard, and in fact, it's not once per turn. So if you're playing something like Thunder Dragons, where pretty much all of their main deck monsters gain advantage when they're banished, Fairy Tail Snow basically becomes a plus five in card advantage, while also putting a body on the field that can block your opponent during their turn by flipping cards face down and extending your combo plays. Fairy Tail Snow was always a good card from its inception, and basically always saw competitive play, because it was the best target for Brilliant Fusion to send it to the graveyard. It wasn't until Thunder Dragons where its effect became kinda broken. So it was banned because it was too good with Thunder Dragons, but was already always good anyway. Especially since you could keep bringing this card out as long as you just had the materials in your graveyard in order to special summon it. So when that grass looks greener was still live in the game, you could bring this card out multiple times during your turn for extra deck plays. And at number one, we have Block Dragon. This card can special summon itself from your hand or graveyard by simply banishing three earth monsters from your hand or graveyard. So it's kind of like Fairy Tale Snow, except it requires less cards. And its special summon effect is also not once per turn. Although Block Dragon goes on to have other effects, where it protects your rock monsters from being destroyed by card effects, and it has an excellent floating effect, where if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard in any way, you can add up to three rock monsters from your deck to your hand, as long as their total levels equals eight. So if you had level four rock monsters in your deck, you'd only be able to add two of them, or if you had a level four and two level twos, you'd be able to add all three of them. And it would be a plus two in card advantage in that way, Although thankfully, its ability to add cards is a hard once per turn. And this card was actually in the game for a long time without any problems because of how terrible the rock type was. That was until Ad Emancipators were added to the game, which is a series of monsters that are all level two and four, which easily like to special summon cards from the hand and deck in order to go into a whole bunch of extra deck plays. And seeing as most of their main deck monsters fit perfectly into the levels for Block Dragon, you could always add three monsters to your hand with Block Dragon's floating effect, while also fulfilling the conditions for Block Dragon to bring himself out because all the Ad Emancipators were Earth attribute. And like I said a little bit earlier on in this video, generally, Konami will ban cards that are effortless plus twos in card advantage, especially cards like Block Dragon who can keep bringing themselves out from the graveyard as long as you have the materials for them. Even if you can't get its floating effect multiple times per turn, you can special summon it multiple times per turn. The card itself also has a big body, so you could just use this thing to attack for 2500 points of damage, and that niche protection could sometimes be useful as well. As soon as the rock type gained a competent archetype, Block Dragon became overpowered almost overnight, and it already had seen play despite the fact that the rock type wasn't good before, so it was banned and will probably stay banned until it gets an errata. 
All right, and for the most part, that's the list. I do have quite a lengthy banned list of cards I won't talk about in videos anymore because I talk about them too much. So for this list, I left off the Dragon Rulers, Chaos Dragon Levianir, Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, Masterpiece the True Draco Slain King, ABC Buster Dragon, and Thunder Dragon Colossus. All of these are excellent cards which have banishing costs for some of their effects, but I left them off so that I could make these videos more entertaining and not talk about the same cards over and over. And hopefully, you appreciate this internal band list. Anyways, if you have any ideas for future videos just like this one, as this one was definitely a recommendation from a previous video's comment section, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments. Also, if you're a fan of the internal band list for these videos, give the video a big thumbs up, because it helps out the video a lot, even more than subscribing, surprisingly enough.